Hi there everyone, welcome to my thoughts on the Mavic Pro 2. So I recently got back from a two week holiday out here in British Columbia, Canada, just getting to grips with the Mavic 2 Pro drone. I actually opted to buy this drone myself rather than be included in the DJI Forum review program, which has no guarantee you get to keep the drone afterwards. I knew a drone like this would be a good choice for me. Why? Well, if you've seen some of my videos, you know I do a lot of hiking. So in terms of portability, this Mavic trumps the Inspire 2. Yes, the Mavic Air I have is still great too, and is still my favourite holiday style drone. But the sort of places I hike along the mountaintops, too windy, it's a very small wingspan on the Mavic Air. So the ability of the Mavic 2 Pro reduces the risk. So coming from Inspire 2, I must be mad to take a hit on image quality. Well, yes and no. For example, the actual number of my audience on YouTube that view on a Mac or PC of the 4K monitor is quite small. The same with Vimeo too. A lot of people like to view on tablets and phones still. But what about as a professional? Yes, naturally, the Inspire 2 footage is in a different league, but with the right locations and use of natural lighting, I'm more than confident I can still sell some of my stock footage to the same media companies. Even the Mavic Air footage is good enough for broadcast TV. You just have to know how to get the best out of it. So what makes this drone so special? Well, I wouldn't really call it special, yet more good marketing and technological progression. This is just a lightweight Phantom 4 Pro with a Hasselblad logo stuck on the front in the same guise as the previous Mavic. Although the 10-bit color adoption may seem like a strong USP, what you've got to remember is that unless you have a 10-bit monitor and the final codec is 10-bit, then it's all kind of pointless. You'll probably watch this on an 8-bit monitor or even a phone and tablet. YouTube then converts it to its own VP9 8-bit codec anyway. Hold on a minute, Mad. Is 10-bit really pointless? Well, there is actually a point to having 10-bit over 8-bit, and that's our ability to push and pull our highlights and darks better within post and give us more flexibility with gradients. Now, the other thing you have to realise is that there are different types of 10-bit, for example, 444, 422 and 420. With the Mavic Pro 2, we're only using 420 HEVEC in HQ. This would make sense as we only have 100 megabits per second to play with, which isn't much, especially for 10 bit. So it's only a small step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. DJI need to bake on 128 gigabytes of onboard memory then we'll have fast enough write speeds for 422, which is the game changer that people actually want. On the 4K HQ mode, there is noticeable barrel distortion, which we have to correct in post. This is quite annoying. It was the same situation when recording ProRes on the Inspire 2. Apparently there isn't enough overhead in the Mavic's processing unit to correct this, which I find a bit strange especially if it's the Amberella H3 chip, which is actually being used. This is only speculation at this point until someone does a proper and full teardown and actually films it. To correct the distortion, I simply use the Inspire 1 distortion correction plugin within Premiere and adjust to my likeness. I then copy and paste the effect to all the necessary clips. I do this last after any color correction as it can be quite hard or intensive and will we'll slow down your workflow, especially in Premiere. No need for a preset, just simply choose minus five on the Inspire One lens correction tool, making sure you've selected the correct size, which will be Ultra HD 3840 by 2160. The Mavic Pro 2 is supposedly only using part of the one inch sensor on the 4K FOV and HQ modes. It is said that the main processing chip for the Mavic Pro 2s is the Amberilla Edge 3. This SOC is capable of 8K and 30fps, 4K Ultra HD at an impressive 120fps. The video modes of the Mavic Pro 2, however, fall far short of this chip's capabilities. So why is this and why only use a partial sensor readout? Well, it could be a number of factors. Thermal limitations, the fact the Mavic Pro 2 has a lot of other sensors and multiple video streams going on, that actually do require a lot of computation. Marketing reasons? Perhaps it's actually a deliberate barrier so that DJI can milk more sales from the Phantom 4 Pro and the up and coming Phantom 5. Maybe there will be a future firmware release that will resolve the issues. If that is the case, then I don't think it should be a paid for solution. Otherwise, the Mavic Pro 2 
should be moved into the professional category. So there is a positive takeaway, though the HQ mode is actually a more realistic representation of what we see with the human eye. So you could use that in combination with the normal full FOV mode, uh, scope to shoot in both modes, just to give you more sort of flexibility within your creations. All these drone shots were filmed without ND filters, so I'm sacrificing a bit of sharpness by increasing my f-stop. That's just to allow me to have a shutter speed at double my frame rate, in this case shutter of 60. So I would speculate that this drone would probably have a sweet spot of around f4 to 5. And it should allow for optimum sharpness. The overall D-log image is a bit soft for my liking, so I recommend running a plus one or even plus two just to sort of bring back a little bit more sharpness. The other settings I like to leave at zero. Freewell kindly hooked me up with a set of ND filters, so I'll be looking forward to creating some nice exposures with these at around my desired f-stop. What I prefer about the Mavic 2 Pro over the Inspire 2. I'm getting much more longer flight times, it feels like at least 10 minutes more. Far superior video transmission, doesn't start cutting out after 400 meters. I'm in the air in minutes, much quicker to set up, much smaller and lighter, perfect for travel, cheaper to replace if something goes wrong, less risk. It's much quieter and won't draw nearly as much attention, more intelligent flight modes, and the car charger takes one and a half hours as opposed to two and a half. Basically, what I want is something that can produce video like the Inspire 2 with the ProRes feature. Does this drone do it? Nope. But does it get me a step closer to what I want? Yes, of course. I'm willing to pay up to two and a half thousand US dollars for a drone that can shoot ProRes 422 minimum in the same guise as the Mavic with up to three lens options. That would be my ultimate drone and is easily possible by today's standards. By turning off features such as obstacle avoidance, in theory, it should free up computing power. So I'd like this diverted into something more useful, like a full readout of the one inch sensor. The Phantom 5 is old hat, redundant design in my opinion. Even though it does have more room for cooling over the Mavic, the Phantom 5 will still be a good drone if it ever comes to fruition, but it's not something I paid for, especially as it will cost a little bit more than the Mavic Pro 2, and then when you add up the extras such as lenses and batteries, it really will be quite a bit more. If GoPro can offer 4K at 60fps, then you can too, DJI. So please make this happen. Other than that, two thumbs up. It's a really nice drone, and I'm very happy to own one. Even though it's never a finished product with DJI, you still got to hand it to them for giving people the opportunity to be this creative. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description for extra education surrounding the Mavic Pro 2. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.